Hi. I'm Andrea Slane, and I'm a professor in the Legal Studies program at uh, UOIT. And for my seven minutes, I want to focus on humanity, technology, and the very human desire for companionship. As humans, of course, we're social animals. We desire human companionship. But modern life, as many a social scientist and even some policymakers acknowledge, has taken a toll on our ability to form and maintain human relationships. This has led to what some have called a crisis of loneliness and social isolation. There's even a, a newly created ministry, a minister for loneliness in the UK since last year. Technology is sometimes implicated in this uptick in the prevalence of loneliness, despite the many ways that digital communication technologies facilitate human connections. They're also often blamed for reducing the quality of our interactions. Humans, it turns out, are often more interested in appearing connected than actually being present for one another. Which leads me to another way that technology is being imagined to address the human need for companionship. And that is via humanoid robots who promise to provide companionship directly rather than just facilitating human connections. There are many examples of humanoid robots, and by that I mean that they don't have to look like humans, they just have to have some human-like features or behaviors. And these robots serve as companions in ways that model the best of human characteristics. Indeed, we imagine them as often better than a human companion could ever be. They're loyal, intelligent, trustworthy, steadfast, principled, and brave. Oftentimes, they're sweet, caring, and cute. It's no wonder that many of us wish these fantasy companions were real and that we could bring them into our homes. The household robot is among these fantasies, a robot who helps us with household chores, runs errands, and tends to our children. While we haven't made much progress on the child tending front, some aspects of these fantasies of robotic household helpers are becoming a reality. While Amazon's voice service Alexa isn't an embodied robot like Rosie from the Jetsons, she is a conversational agent that responds to your voice commands to carry out various helpful tasks around your home. She retrieves and delivers information to you and can engage in basic, companionate, quote unquote, user delighting conversation, as Alexa's development team calls it. While the echo that channels Alexa's voice to your home is essentially an unobtrusive hardware, other developers continue to build on our attraction to a more face-to-face -face interaction. For a social robot who is, as Jibo's marketers promise, not just artificially intelligent, but also authentically charming. <laughs> Many different models of social robots are hitting the consumer market right now. Most have voice and facial recognition as well as AI capabilities. Some can move around your house. Some can gesture, lead calisthenics, and dance. Many are marketed as useful companions for everyone, but especially for seniors. They tap not only into our own desires for companionship, but also into our anxieties about our failure to provide human companionship to our aging parents. Many robots can't, it, maybe robots can't tend to our children like Rosie did, but maybe our parents? At the moment, these embodied companion robots are not very sophisticated conversationalists, but I don't doubt that they soon will be. Chatbots like text-based Mitsuko here are becoming increasingly good at conversations. They're empowered by sophisticated AI that can mine the vast digital media database of human conversations for realistic speech patterns and can adapt to the user's conversational needs. It's not a big leap from being a good conversationalist to being a therapeutic tool. And chatbots, and in turn embodied robots capable of more sophisticated chat, are already being marketed with this role in mind too. Which brings me to another basic human characteristic, vulnerability. Vulnerability is not a categorically bad thing. Vulnerability is a central feature of the human condition. We're physically, psychologically, financially, socially, and emotionally vulnerable in myriad ways. 
This means that it is how we recognize, validate, and protect each other from harm in light of these various pervasive and persistent vulnerabilities that shape the moral, legal, and ethical tasks before us as we face the realization of the fantasy of companion robots. Longing for a companion you can trust makes you vulnerable in the good ways that can lead to strong bonds and social supports and in the bad ways that can allow you to be manipulated. I'm not going to go out on a limb if I say that developers love their robots. They share in a dream of bringing useful, affordable, and personable robots to the consumer market. But it's also obvious, to me at least, that they don't yet know how to make money doing so. So they're developing the hardware, they're developing conversational agents, and they're expanding functionalities, and they're commonly opening up their platforms to others to develop applications. This is not in itself a bad thing, not at all, but in leaving it up to a third-party developer downstream to come up with ways to monetize robot companions so as to sustain their ongoing development and encourage more widespread adoption and use, we clearly need to learn from the hard lessons that the social media revolution continues to teach us. We need more effective and meaningful ways to know what happens to the information we share across and now potentially with our devices. We need to know that when we believe that we are speaking in confidence, that our information is truly private and secure, even as it may need to be stored and processed in the cloud somewhere if our robot is going to keep learning. And we need to know that if our robot performs different support functions, both practical household kind of chores and emotional support, that it knows the difference and doesn't use our emotional vulnerability to sell us things or services or get us to vote a certain way. To get there, we need to require that our companion robots be transparent. It needs to be very clear not only what our robots are doing, but who the humans are that are benefiting behind the scenes and how. Thank you.